Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is episode 18 and we're going to talk about Azure Data Factory, loading data into Azure SQL Data Warehouse and some gotchas and issues that I got with trying to load some files based on a wildcard. My name is Warner Chavez, I'm a SQL Server MCM, Microsoft Data Platform MVP. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So the topic for today is Azure Data Factory mixed with Data Warehouse and trying to do wildcard based loading through a folder that has a bunch of different files. I'm going to be using Data Factory V2, which is the release that Microsoft did earlier on this year, where they improved a lot of the capabilities compared to ADF V1. They added better flow control, they added more activities, they added better templatizing, and so on. So I had to load, load about one terabyte of data into Data Warehouse, and I thought it was a great opportunity to try out uh, DF V2 and see if it could load this amount of data fairly efficiently, right? So in order to do this, I knew that I had to be using Polybase. Polybase is a module inside Azure SQL Data Warehouse and also inside SQL Server that can do really high speed parallel loads into SQL Server or into Azure SQL Data Warehouse in this case. However, in some cases, ADF cannot use Polybase, and this is when we can see some performance degradation. So you always want to be using Polybase when you're loading high amounts of data into SQL Data Warehouse. Now the issue that I had in particular is that Polybase doesn't have built-in wildcard support. However, ADF does have wildcard support when you're using the blob storage source. So I thought I would just use blob storage, add a wildcard, load into Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and ADF would handle things under the covers. However, it did handle things under the covers, but not in the way that I wanted it to. Instead of somehow taking the files that match the wildcard and passing them on into Polybase, what it did is was just it gave up on using Polybase, continued to load the data, but did it through the control node type of insert. This type of insert then, because it is not done through Polybase, it is fairly slow and does not have the throughput that you would expect if you were loading through Polybase. Let's just jump into the demo and I'm going to show you the difference that I found between loading with Polybase or not loading with Polybase and I'll show you the workaround also that I used so that I could still use the wildcards but this time Polybase was used under the covers. Alright, let's check it out. Okay, so this is the screen for the first pipeline that I developed where I thought it was just simply I'll set the wildcard, I'll set it to use Polybase and it will just work. So it's very simple, it just had one copy data activity. So I'm gonna look at the details of that copy data activity. Let me move this up a little bit. And you can see here at the source, I'm just using a blob storage source, right? And if I go here and I just click edit to see this blob storage source, and I go here to the connections, you can see right here on the file path, I'm using a, just a star wildcard because I have a bunch of files that said supplier one, it was .tvl, and it were, they were just pipe delimited text files. So I had supplier one to supplier, I believe, eight or nine. So I had about eight or nine different files, and they were just different numbers. So I figured, well, I'll just put the wildcard on them, and then ADF will just pick up you know, anything that says supplier something, right? So that's why I just used supply star. And ADF was actually able to preview the data and give me a proper schema. Here's the schema definition that it came up with, which was correct. So it means that this particular component does understand the wildcards, right? So that's it's not particularly the issue. The issue is that, as we'll see later on here, once it gets going, it's unable to use Polybase, right? So I'm gonna close this and I'll show you again the actual config here. Now on the sync, I am using a SQL Data Warehouse Sync data set. And you can see very clearly on the screen here where it says allow Polybase, right? So it allows me to put the wildcard on the source and then allows me to just say allow Polybase on the destination data warehouse and I can save it and I can deploy it. Okay, so so far so good. I thought we're ready to go. I can use wildcards through ADF and it's just going to use Polybase under the covers so I can get around the issue that Polybase does not support wildcards itself. Okay, so let's see what happened here. I'm going to move over and I'll show you here the monitoring look of this particular run. And we'll go into details here as to what happened here in the copy activity. 
Now, as you can see at the top, look at that. It says data written and destination was eight gigabytes. It was 30 million rows that were written and the throughput was not even two megabytes per second, right? 1.83 megabytes per second. It took 38 minutes to basically unpack a about four gigs of data into eight gigs of data in SQL Data Warehouse, right? That's a long time. What we would think is from a big parallel MPP type of appliance, if it was used in Polybase, it should not take that long. Now, to my surprise, again, you can see here at the bottom on the details of the particular activity, you can see at the very end, and I'm highlighting it on the screen right now, where it says SQL DW Polybase false, right? So this is why this was so slow. So I was allowed to put all the info on the pipeline and the pipeline allowed me to save it saying, you know, allow Polybase even, but once it actually started running, it didn't just fail. It kept going, but the fact that it couldn't use Polybase, it failed back into just doing a regular control node insert into DW and that's what leads to the bad performance. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys difference when you use another pipeline or what I did to basically work around this situation. So I'm going to open here another um, another pipeline. So this one instead, so you guys can see here, is not just a copy activity. It's a for each loop first of all. So if I select a for each loop and I go here to the settings, you'll see what's going on here. I am generating a set of numbers and a range from one to eight because I had eight particular files of this. It's a parts supplier file. So I had eight files for this particular type of file. So I wanted to generate a number from one to eight. You can see here. So this range is a built-in expression inside Data Factory. So when I run this, what's going to happen is when the for each starts to execute, it's going to have this array called items, and you can populate it with many different things. In my case, I'm populating it with the numbers because the wildcard that I wanted to use was the different numbers. So I'm generating one to eight. Each time that the loop goes over, it's going to have this one. Then the next time the loop goes over, it's going to generate a two and so on until it hits eight, and that's the end of the pipeline okay now if I go on the activities you see inside the for each I only have one copy activity that means every time that the loop runs is going to execute the copy data activity okay so let's look what the copy data then looks like I'm just gonna click here with edit activities and then I have the copy data here now I'm gonna show you real quick the source it's still the Azure blob part supplier However, look here, when I set data set properties, there is a number property and there's a value. Basically, this is a parameter that is being passed into the data set when this copy data is executed. And this particular value here, at item and the parenthesis, it's a built-in expression in ADF that basically says this parameter on this run is going to have the value of the current iteration of the for each, okay? So on the first iteration, this at item parenthesis is gonna return a one and so on until at the last iteration, it will return an eight and that will be the last part of the loop, okay? So I'm passing that into the source data set. Now, if I edit the source data set, and I'll show you here the connection, what I'm using here, this is where the magic happens. I am using an expression to build the file path, right? So because I don't have wildcard support, if I want to do it this way, because Polybase doesn't have wildcard support, and if I use the wildcard with ADF, then I'm not going to be able to use Polybase. Then what I do is that I replace the wildcard by basically building the file path for each file using that parameter that is passed from the for each. So if you guys look at here, I'm using a concatenation function. It's taking the name parts up underscore groups. That was the prefix of all my files. Then it's doing a conversion to string of the data set number, the parameter that I'm passing through, and then concatenating again dot TBL because that was the extension of the files. So every time that this runs, this particular data set is going to build a new file path based on the different value of the parameter number. And the parameter number is defined here inside the data set, right? So the parameter, you can see I gave it a name here, number. I set it as an integer as the type. And then I populate the value that I pass in through this um, 
this parameter here in the source. Now interestingly, once I go to the sync, then there's nothing I need to do because the sync simply is going to get one file submitted at a time based on how I just showed you I configured the source from Love Storage. So as far as the sync, in this case data warehouse is concerned, it is only seeing one file at a time, right? And because I have here set to allow Polybase, then this time it is going to activate. Polybase is not going to fall back and fail on it. And I'll show you guys the results here when you use this other method of loading to try to do multiple files and simulate that wildcard. So I'm gonna go back into Azure Data Factory and I'm gonna go back into my pipelines. And let me just search here for my part supplier pipeline. It's right here. Okay, and we can see here the entire for each and it did all the different copy activities because it was running several over several different files. And I'll just show you one iteration of this. For example, this iteration right here, we can see it unpacked 47 gigs and wrote 40, 300 million records into SQL Data Warehouse in just three minutes, right? So if you guys remember the previous run that I just showed you where it failed back on not using Polybase, it was eight gigs and took 38 minutes, right? So it's really, really, really big improvement. It was 1.83 megabytes per second that it was loading in that type of load. Whereas here now using Polybase, the throughput is 250.5 megabytes per second. So we're getting more than 100x improvement in throughput because now if we look at the details here, you can see very clearly SQL DW Polybase is set to true, right? So the fact that Polybase is active makes a huge difference and we get 100x performance improvement. Okay, so I hope I gave you a good overview of what the issue was. You could see the big performance difference from a load that didn't use Polybase to the one that actually did use Polybase. And then again, the trick here is to use those ADF parameters as a replacement, as a replacement for your wildcard, right? So instead of just specifying a wildcard, what you do is that you create a parameter that will be the variable part of the file path, and then you submit those to the copy data activity. So for Polybase, really all it's doing is individual file loading, right? And also make sure when you do are running this, ADF under the covers, remember, it falls back not using Polybase, but it doesn't tell you. You'll simply get slower performance. So if you're not actively monitoring the speed of your loads, you might not notice. So always proactively, at least on the first run, make sure that Polybase is being used so that you're getting the maximum speed possible on your data loads, all right? So I hope these tips are useful for you in the future. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Until next time.